Hello, this is your host, Preet, and uh, we're going to be learning structures in C and C++. So the idea of structures is uh, to group uh, information or uh, variables together. So for example, uh, let's say that uh, you have, uh, you need information for one student. So a student has an age, student has a student ID, SID, and the student may also have first and last name. So let's just say the maximum name is 128, uh, Charles. So this is what you would do for a student. Now, what if I tell you that you need uh, enough storage for 100 students? So the next approach to this is you might declare 100 over here, 100 over here, and change this array to multidimensional 100, like so. So this is a little bit cryptic. It's more maintenance. And as you saw, if I needed to change students uh, from 1 to 100, you needed to modify three arrays to 100 students. So let's go ahead and change this to a structure. So let's uh, show you how to declare a type definition of a structure. So this is the syntax you have to follow. And I'll go over the syntax in just a few seconds. Okay, so the way this uh, type definition works is you're saying type define a structure with this name and each student type. So this is the usual standard uh, you put underscore T for type. So each student type has an age, uh, a student ID, and a name. So now when I need to declare a student structure, I simply say student type uh, me. And how do we get information into this variable? Use the dot notation. So let's say you ask, enter your student ID. So you will actually scan F into me dot uh, SID. And because it's scan F, you need to put address of something. So this is how you would scan information into the structure. So this me is of type student, and he's a container which contains age, student ID, and name. So we can keep uh, keep going here, and we can say enter your name, and it would be uh, address of me dot name. So the first location of name. So the idea is you basically would use the dot notation. So how would you print it out? So you can say you entered this ID, so me dot, and because I'm using Eclipse, this will auto-complete it for you. Once you type the dot, it shows you the members of this container. So this would be me dot SID. So the dot is the notation you would use to uh, access information about this container, which is me, he's of this type. So essentially what's happening here is this type def is you're defining your own variable which has these three uh, things inside of it. And you access this container using the dot notation. So let's go ahead and stretch this concept into arrays. So now back to the original problem, what if you wanted 100 students? How would you get information about 100 students? So what I can do is declare an array of students with 100 of them. So now if you really wanted uh, to ask for 100 students input, you could do something like this. I'm going to copy and paste this and I'll show you what modifications are needed to make this work. So I'll say enter SID. So maybe I'll print the student number first and then ask for the student ID. So this will be basically I plus one. 
because when I want this printed, I want to say number one, enter student ID, number one, enter name, and then number two, enter student ID. So I start from zero, so I'm going to tell printf to print the equivalent of I plus one. So how do we change this? So instead of address of a single student, which was me, I'm going to say address of array structure with an index. So let's actually uh, reduce this down to maybe 10 or, or let's say it's three students because I'm going to demonstrate this right now. And I'm going to use the same loop to print out the uh, array information. So I will say, so I made a small correction over here. I should have been scanning a percent %s. Okay, so the next thing I, I put in just now is I am printing information of, of three students. So I'm going to print a, the number, student number, which is going to be I plus one. And I'm going to print the uh, student's uh, SID and name. So before you access the dot, uh, because it's an array, you first define uh, which array uh, element number. So I'm going to say student array 0.SID, student array 1.SID, student array 2.SID. And I'm only going to go up to 0, 1, and 2 because this loop only goes through when i is less than 3. So let's uh, run this program real quick. So a couple of small corrections. I was zero, using 0. I went, meant to use i over here. And this was a percent %s. So if I run this program, it's going to ask for one student's information, and it's going to ask for then three students' information and print all these three students out. So this is the first one. So I'm going to type one. This is first. And then this is asking for the array number one. SID is two. Um, student is second. Three, four, five. So as you see here, after I entered this uh, input, after entering the input, I was able to print information of all, of all TD students out. So compared to an array of integers, uh, array of age, array of student ID, array of name, it's better to group information together into a structure. And let's say I want to modify for um, number of students to 100, I can easily modify that to 100 because I only have to change for, I should only have to change for 1, but I was hard coding it to 3. So by using this variable now, now I can say I want students uh, information for 1,000 students, and it will go ahead and ask me that. So, so far I've taught you how to declare uh, how to create a structure and how to declare one structure instance and how to declare many structure instances and how to use the dot notation to access the actual variable. So the next thing I have for demonstration is how to return a structure from a function. So before I was asking for information within this loop. Now what I'm saying is this array element number equals to get student info. So I'm going to get student info from this function. What this function does is it returns you the student type. So it returns one full structure back. And what happens here is I declare a sting single student and I scan up information about this single student into sd.sid, sd.name. And once I have all this information, I return that structure back. So the return structure is copied into this array element. So, so far, this program is the same, except uh, I've just organized it a little bit more by getting student information from a function. So my main function became a little clear. So I'm going to demonstrate the same thing, how to be able to pass uh, a student uh, information to a function and print it out. So let's walk through this one. Um, 
So I'm going to say print student info, which takes a variable of type student, and I'm going to print that out. So maybe for uh, display purposes, I'll be printing out exactly which student number. So let's go ahead and modify this one. So this function is given the, the student number and the student uh, information, and he will basically print out SID and the name. So this for loop now becomes a little simpler. I just tell this for loop that my student number is I plus one, and my student information is here, and he will go ahead and print it out. So same concept here, what's happening is you are copying your array element from your main function over to him. So again, the keyword is we are copying information into a new variable called st. And then once print student information has this copy, he can go ahead and modify the copy. And uh, by definition, because we gave a copy of the student, our original array did not get modified. So I can say sd dot sid equals zero. He's going to modify only his copy of student. The original array is still here. It's not modified. So again, when we call this function, we're essentially saying student type sd equals to array. We're basically doing this. And because we're copying from here, to here, the copy is not modified. So the program will run uh, the same way so far, except we just have to, we just have split into different modules. The next thing I'm going to do is how to pass a pointer. So this is a little bit inefficient because, you know, we're modifying a copy of it. Because we're modifying the copy, uh, an unnecessary copy is made just for the sake of printing it out. So how do we how do we actually um, give our original without modifying the copy? What I can say is I take a pointer to, so I'm going to say student pointer. So two things happen when you say this. When you give the pointer, the first thing is he must give the pointer uh, of where the student structure is stored at rather than the copy. So I'm going to say address of the array. So this is actually, uh, I'm, I'm giving away where my student structure is stored at so he can access him. So the second thing that happens when we give away the copy is, or when we give away the pointer is now he's a pointer. If you are using a structure pointer, the rules are instead of the dot, you must use an arrow. So as you see, Eclipse is already complaining that uh, this field cannot be resolved. The reason why is because it's a pointer, you have to use a pointer uh, like this arrow. So once you finish typing the pointer, then it gives you choices of the elements of the uh, this student type. So, so far, uh, to recap, use the dot notation if it's a regular student structure, but use the pointer uh, notation if it's a pointer. So these are the only two rules of uh, using the structure. You just have to realize if it's a copy or if it's a pointer. So let's go ahead and run this program with just three students. I don't want to enter information of uh, 1,000 students. So here we go. Number one, enter student ID. Name is first. Number two, second. Number three, Heard. And as you see, after we enter the information, uh, everything still works uh, normally. So uh, we showed you how to declare a student structure. And then after you declare student structure, normally you will use a dot notation. But if your student structure is a pointer, then you use the pointer notation. And one uh, thing about the pointer is that if you use pointer notation, you can modify the student ID something and it will be affected back in the main function. Thanks for watching the video and uh, please see the Wikipedia site for more information.